So here's my uh, uh, audacious, um, here's my uh, audacious gamble that actually, ladies and gentlemen, we are in this amazing historical shift going on. And we were, so, we were so grateful to the Egyptians for being so clear about this power that they, at any moment, could have said, uh-uh, no, the best way is on struggle. Because that would have been, that would have been maybe even a more natural script to go with. They taught us something, and they paid for it, too. Oh, hundreds of people paid for it for us so we could see. And someday we will pay so other people uh, can see. In any case, here's what I'm saying. I've come to the conclusion that, in fact, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson is sitting in a bar in uh, Virginia <laughs> about 1760, <laughs> and he nudges the guy next to him. He goes, how about this idea for a civilization, for a society? Um, what we'll do is we'll have people go into a little room and write down their preferences. We'll add the preferences up, and whoever has the most preferences, that's the direction the society will go in. And the guy next to him is drinking a Sam Adams. <laughs> he's drinking a beer and he looks up and he goes, well that's nuts because it's always the guys with the guns who make those decisions. He goes, I know 5,000 years since Babylon it's been like that, you know, but let's experiment with this non-violence that is going to trump, uh, where, where, where ballots will trump bullets. <clears throat> let's, let's, let's try this out. What I think, from that little story, I think for the last 200 and some years, we've been experimenting. Actually, democracy itself is a form of this nonviolent shift. It's saying it's not just the guys with the gun. Have we got it right? No. We haven't figured it out. We haven't even figured out democracy correctly yet. But we're moving, you know, six steps forward and three steps back. Although sometimes in my life I go like one step forward, 87 steps forward. <laughs> uh, but that's what we're about. We're, we're part of the shift. And let me just very quickly tell you what the elements, the trends that I see. And I'm saying this because you're a part of it. You've been making it happen. The books may not be written about everything that you've done for justice and peace to do this, to withdraw consent from systems of racism and sexism and homophobia and economic injustice. Books may not be written about that, but know that love is endless. And it's happening. We know, we know that the people in Serbia got excited because of what happened with the Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was inspired also by Gandhi. Gandhi was inspired by Thoreau. I mean, there's a whole lot of uh, networks, and now the people in Egypt inspired by Serbia. With a, a lot more time, we could actually build an amazing web to see what you did in Dallas actually connected with what happened in Turner Square. I have no doubt about that. I have no doubt about that because we've actually had many movements in this country that actually have made change happen. We don't have time to go into that. But let me just mention four things. First of all, there are tons of actions happening all over the, all over the lot. If you don't know the website, wagingnonviolence.org, I invite you to write it down on your napkin or on your fleshy tablets of your heart or something. Wagingnonviolence.org serves up like 10 <coughs> movements that are happening in real time in this country and around the world every day. And they have an amazing archive. It's been going for two years. And uh, it's, it's tremendous. You will, you will every day you spend, as a spiritual practice, you spend five minutes with wagingnonviolence.org. <laughs> You'll feel so much better. Oh, and I'm part of that. And why aren't they talking about what happened at the Dallas Peace Center? Because we're so you can you can also send them stories, and those can be put up there. Okay, so that's there's a huge amount of campaigning and organizing on human rights, on war, on immigration, on all the issues that matter. It's happening all over the planet. There were more movements in the 70s than in the 60s. There were more movements in the 80s than the 70s. There were more movements in the 90s than the 80s. And there have been more movements this past decade 
than the previous half. We need to know this. Secondly, there are so many tools now we didn't have 20, 30, 40 years ago. Nonviolent communication, uh, trauma healing, uh, all kinds of nonviolent interventions, anti racism training. There's so many things that didn't exist before. This is another very, very important trend for this shift that I'm calling the nonviolent shift or mainstreaming nonviolent. Audaciously calling it mainstreaming nonviolent. Third, more and more people are actually talking about, even below the tools and strategies, what is it that really gets us going? The empathy, the love, the compassion, the connection, the fact that we all are connected. All of that is a, is a conversation going on all around the world. And not only a conversation, people are actually living this stuff out. They're experimenting with it. And then finally, there is a a growing sense throughout the world that, in fact, a new worldview is emerging, that things are not mechanistic and separate, that, in fact, we are all connected. So I see these four trends, which uh, I could go into a lot more detail, but I'm just trying to give you the highlights, are actually saying we're part of this amazing wave, and that whatever we do here in Texas is going to be part of that wave. And we need that because we're coming to a crossroads as a plan. And if I'm at the crossroads, I want to be, be with people I can train with and love and have compassion for, even if we have our little icky little stuff here and there, which is all part of it. Because I guess the, the key thing is we're not talking about building a utopia. When I say mainstreaming nonviolence, it's not about a utopia. It's saying we have a problem and let's get a vision and toolbox and let's see. Everybody getting that vision and that toolbox. Uh, when we decided to mainstream hospitals back in the 18th century, it wasn't that all of a sudden we were all going to be uh, disease free. It just meant we're going to have resources now to deal with this. So when I say mainstream nonviolence, we're talking about a world of violence and injustice. <coughs> it's how we get trained, and, and not only trained, but aware. So my final pitch here. Here are the things that I see are going to be very important, and you're already doing these in all your ways here. Awareness, let's raise the visibility like waging nonviolence is trying to do. That's saying this stuff is happening everywhere. Secondly, education. Uh, how do we train one another? As Kelly said, Dr. Betty's done 600 trainings across the United States and around the world, and about 25,000 people have taken that. And there are scads of training programs now everywhere. Training and education, K through 12, etc. Third, uh, design. There's going to be a whole new industry called nonviolent design. It's going to say, how do we actually build systems and structures and organizations that actually put these principles of trans people us versus them in the practice? How do we actually create structures that respond to and propagate empathy and connection and be able to face the violence and injustice, but in a way we have tools? Infrastructure, how do we build those organizations, which you've been valiantly doing here for the last three decades. And, and finally, you can have all those things, but if you don't have the last one, it's, it's, it's uh, the last one is action. Uh, it's so important to act our way into thinking. So when we see something that really sticks in our craw, we get the people together, we sit in a room, we get, uh, we wait for that moment to come, and we don't wait for the email. We don't even wait for the email from Kelly. Wow. Oh, they call her up and say, come on, let's do this together. Action is crucial. And it will change you.
don't show. Power here will do the work. Once more, keeps the pain of living, to pain uh, living, to get excited about living together, and um, being able to share among ourselves in this larger world that there's an alternative. And we're seeing here at this effort at the uh, uh, Dallas Peace Center. And I really want to thank you for, for everything you're doing to help.